Good afternoon. My name is Lance Ichinotsubo of Captive Seas and Elite Marine Life. I'm here with my good friend Richard Back, and we're going to discuss hyposalinity today. Hyposalinity, as we describe it, is a lowered level of salt in concentration between 1.010 and 1.013 specific gravity. That translates to approximately 13 to 17 uh, parts per thousand salinity. Back in the day when uh, we were first starting out with receiving fish shipments from all over the world, uh, we noticed that there was a lot of losses and, and a serious amount of parasites contained within the shipments. Uh, after careful discussion uh, with, with some friends of ours, notably Tom Frakes and uh, George Blaziola and even Pete Mohan, uh, we've decided that hyposalinity was something we wanted to try. And uh, what we did was we lowered the specific gravity in our quarantine tanks to 1.010. And as we acclimated our fish and put them into the holding slash quarantine tanks, we would hold them at a hyposalinity level. We would also use medications as necessary, particularly copper at that time. Hyposalinity was very effective in helping us get rid of parasites, of course, along with medications and other things. The first aid, as we call it, hyposalinity, would uh, actually be a detriment to the parasite in that the parasites were not osmoregulatory, and we're talking about ciliated protozoans primarily. These parasites are accustomed to a specific level of salt. Now, radically, what we would do is drop the SG, let's say from 1.025 to 1.010, all at once. Fish were able to tolerate that quite well, but parasites could not. And when you mix that with medications, we uh, quickly eradicated many of the more common parasites. Unfortunately, cryptocarrion had a longer life cycle, so it took a little bit longer. Hyposalinity also allowed the water to contain more oxygen, making it easier for the fish to receive that oxygen through their gills. Not to mention, there would be potential parasites in their gills, and this hyposalinity along with the medications would allow that to permeate through the gills and hopefully eradicate parasites from those areas which were not visible. Hyposalinity, as, as we define it, is a level of salt concentration between 1.010 and 1.013 specific gravity or 13 to 17 parts per thousand salinity. At that lower level, fish can tolerate it in a radical drop from 2.5 to 1.3, for example. But we prefer to keep it around 1.0 if at all possible. However, the range is between 1.0 and 1.3. It's a very tight range. Below that can be very detrimental to fish. Above that, not very detrimental to parasites. Typically, we would leave our fish in hyposalinity in the quarantine systems for as long as it took to eradicate the potential diseases that we suspected or that we saw. Once we felt it was safe to remove the medication and or remove the fish from quarantine, we would then begin to raise the salinity, specific gravity, upwards of our target, which would be 1.020 to 1.025, depending on whether it was a fish only or a reef aquarium. Unfortunately though, fish cannot tolerate rises in salinity very quickly. So, for example, we would keep them at 1.010 specific gravity and we would raise that to 1.012 in a 24 hour period. About two thousandths of a, of a point in salinity rays or specific gravity rays rather, would uh, constitute a safe rise per day so within 24 hours of that, we would raise it another 0.002 to, so it, it, it would go from 1.012 to 1.014, and the next day 1.6, and the next day 1.8, et cetera, et cetera. We have found that by using salt mix at about a rate of one cup per 50 gallons, 
will typically raise specific gravity from 1.010 to 1.012. To take a fish from quarantine at 1.010 out to the sail units at 1.025 took quite a few days because obviously we could not raise it that quickly. So if you're figuring out a raise of 0 0.002 specific gravity per day from 1.0 to 2.5, you can extrapolate and do the math and figure out, ah, it's gonna take about a week and a half. If you raise it too quickly, the um, fish might suffer from osmotic shock. The salt level rising too quickly could create major issues for most fish. Now then, osmotic shock could include such things as exophthalmia and internal organ failures, uh, as well as uh, gill issues and even slime coat issues. Now as far as contraindications of hyposalinity in combination with medications, we have not found any to be uh, worthy of mention. As a matter of fact, we've used hyposalinity and copper, we've used hyposalinity and chloroquine, We've used hyposalinity and formalin. So we have not found that there's any detrimental side effects in com combination with medications that we typically would use for the use of treating parasites. Now one of the major factors that prompted us to look into and utilize hyposalinity was essentially parasites are not able to control the osmosis in their cell walls. They are not osmoregulatory. So as they are in a higher salinity internally and you place them into a lowered salinity, specific gravity, they would then begin to absorb fresh water to equalize the osmotic pressures inside and outside of their cell walls. At some point, the theory goes, they will absorb so much water that their membrane will break and they will explode, killing the parasite. We've noticed that that is actually happening by looking at them on slides with fresh water. And we have seen parasites actually absorb water, grow and burst right on the slide. Also, hyposalinity has made it effective to utilize copper in treatment for Brooklynella, whereas the majority of uh, information out there indicates that formalin is the drug of choice and that copper was not effective. In utilizing copper in conjunction with hyposalinity, we have found that we were very fortunate to be able to eradicate Brooklynella using copper. Although we normally would expose all species of fish to hyposalinity in times of stress and disease, we normally would not expose fairy wrasses in general prophylactically because they don't appear to tolerate it as much as other species. In closing, I would like to say that hyposalinity is a very important and effective tool in the arsenal of the aquarist in controlling parasites. We use it routinely, and we've been using it for well over 40 years now. We firmly believe that anything that we can do to add to the efficacy of our treatments and in to, uh, the abilities to save our fish from dying prematurely is well worth the effort. We thank you for listening, and I'll see you again next time.